Okay, I checked and it doesn't look like anybody has done today's lesson yet. And so um, this will be a good one. We'll go through the lesson and then you guys can do it in breakout rooms with a partner or on your own. Today's lesson is 1004. It's a new lesson. You have two days for it, so you don't have to turn it in until Monday, but you should be reading through the lesson today. So here it is, fifth grade, 1004, volume combinations. And then here's, it's got a written assignment um, instead, of a, instead of a quiz this time. So I always like to take a look at the assignment by going to the last page and say, what is my assignment? Oh, volume combinations is going to be my assignment. So here's what is the assignment is figuring out these volume combinations. What I'd like you to think about it like is that these shapes are like two boxes put together. So in other words, if I wanted to know the volume of these two boxes, it's almost like I would separate them figure out their separate dimensions, figure out both combinations and then add them together. Does that make sense? When you have a, a shape like that, you gotta see, can I figure out separate dimensions and separate it? So that's what we're practicing today is volume combinations. When we go back to the lesson, you're gonna see that in 1004, there are seven pages. We're gonna go back to page one. Page one's just gonna tell you, Emily doesn't want an ordinary house. Do you see these cool houses over here on the right? Ms. Laws went to that village, it's in Italy, it's called Albrobello, and they look like little hobbit houses. And the reason they built their houses like this is that they were taxed based on how much uh, they had in the way of a house. So whenever the tax people came over, they would take these houses apart because they're just stacked stones to make these beautiful roofs. Um, so. Um, they would be taxed by how much area their house was. So they wanted their house to be broken or small when the tax guys came by. So it's kind of interesting that they use them for this model because it is true in real life that people used this form of house to try to cheat the tax collectors and make their volume smaller by breaking their house down. So we're going to find the volume of a complex figure by breaking or partitioning the figure into two non-overlapping rectangular prisms and adding their volume. Okay, it's a little tricky. It takes some ability to picture math. So this part of the lesson is super important to really understand what's happening. What is the volume of each rectangular prism? Okay, this is a pretty hard one. Rectangle A, what's the volume? Uh... Bree, put it in the chat. What's the volume of A? How many blocks are there there, Bree, in A? Hello, are you there, Bree? How many blocks are there? Oh, you probably did it. Two, yay. Thank you. Sorry, I wasn't at the end of the chat. And let's do another hard one. Uh, Amoy, how many blocks are in B? Four. So all together, we have six. Easy peasy. So if you saw this shape, you would have to just be careful that you didn't say, oh, this is a three by four shape because it's not all there, is it? Like the middle part would be gone. So you need to like break it apart into two shapes and picture what it would be in two shapes. We can find the volume of a complex figure by breaking it or partitioning it into rectangular prisms. For example, we can break this into two prisms. First, we break it apart and you have to decide where to break it. Um, you can see here, there's two ways to break it apart. In this case, you could split it here between the yellow and the gray, or you could go over here and split it on this side. And it's gonna depend on which dimensions you're given where you break it up. So in the case of this figure, you could look at this and say, how do I figure out what this shape is, okay? Um, you're gonna have to think, well, if I cut right across and I take that little box off the top, like they're stacked, let's say I picture it like this. Here's the bottom box. Here's the top box. box. I'm gonna stop my share for a minute. Let's say I'm picturing it like this and I'm imagining that this is separate and pulling it apart like that. Let's look back at that shape and see how it works. Because the other way to do it 
would be to have it like this, where you're picturing three shapes. Let me stop my share for a minute. Well, let me show the share. The other way to do it would be like if you continued the line all the way to the bottom and you made three shapes, two little ones on the side and one in the middle. But we're going to pretend that we're just taking that box off the top. Well, we can figure out the bottom box because we know it's two inches tall, four inches wide, and 12 inches long. Two times four is eight. Eight times 12 is 96. So that bottom box is 96. If we do the top box, we know it's three and six, but how do we figure um, how tall or, or how long it is? Well, we can see that it's the same four inches. So part of the trick here is understanding which side is the same. So let me show you what I mean by that. We've got six, three, four, and 12 for our dimensions. So you have to be able to look at this and say, well, <clears throat> I know that this is six, and I know that this is three, but I don't know this side. They didn't give it to me, but they did give me this one, and it would be exactly the same. So you have to kind of try to see which of those shapes are the same. It helps sometimes to like go and label all of the dimensions of that box. So let's take a look at it again. This can be really tricky because it's hard for me to teach you how to picture it. Here's the answer. So here they're picturing not the red line, cutting it off. You know that this is 12 inches, two and four, so we can figure out the bottom box. There we are, two, 12, four, three, and six. But what are these two uh, dimensions here? That's what we don't know. Hmm. Well, if you look at the six inches on the top edge, that's gonna be the same as the front edge, isn't it? So here they showed you figuring out the 96 inches cubed is the bottom blue box. Now we have to do the top one. Uh, that's the same one, okay. Next, we find the volume of the yellow rectangular prism. The length of the yellow rectangular prism is six inches and the height is three inches. But what is the width? Well, you're going to have to look around and say, is it six or four? Well, I'm going to have to look and say, oh, here's four down here. So the one above it would be four, and this one 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 would be four. So you have to see where the fours would be. Now we know three times four times six, okay? Three times four is 12. 12 times six is 72. Now we have to remember to add both of those together. So we've got 96 plus 72, which equals 168 cubic inches. If we were building that little house, that's what they would have been taxed on. This can be pretty complex to do, so I want you to really try to picture it, and if you have to grab some boxes and look at them, make sure you have some boxes handy to look at. When designing her home, Emily has her character build little models. This way she can imagine what the house will look like. Her first design is simple. It's just a square box, easy to figure out the volume, because you know they charge to build a house, when you hire a contractor, they charge you by square foot. So like when they were gonna design our house, it was too much money. And I had to figure out how to cut down on the square feet. So you really do use this in real life. What is the volume of this object? Okay, so step one, decide how you're gonna divide it. Here they've divided this little purple part at the front. They could have gone over and divided it over to the side, but this is what they did. Step two, you're gonna find the base of it or the purple part, right? Four times five times two. So that's four times five is 20 times two is 40. So we've got our 40, oh wait, the brown prism. Oh, they did the brown prism first. I don't know why. Anyway, <laughs> I guess they looked at the base times the meter. So they, they did the brown one first. It doesn't really matter. You know all your dimensions, two times five times six, four times two times five, okay? Be careful that when you do this, you don't grab random measurements. Like if you tried to combine the six times the four, you're mixing up the two boxes. So be sure you're trying to picture just one part of the box at a time. Emily thinks she might put a reading room above the garage. Calculate how much volume this would add. Oh, here goes the reading room up here. All right, so be careful. Think about how you wanna cut this box. So just picture it for a minute and think, am I gonna cut it here or here? Hmm, 
I could cut it here. I know that this is going to be four. So six times two times four. And if I went across here, I know that that is six times three times four. So I could do that. Can I cut it here? Yeah, I could cut it either way. I'm going to, they're going to do it this way. Then you figure out the area of one of the shapes, and it does help to shade in the shape so that you can see the difference. And then the other shape, and then you add it together. This can get pretty confusing. I really recommend that you pay attention. Let's watch this video together to watch it again. Find the volume of the objects. Oh, this is where they want us to do it. So in this case, let's go ahead and do it. So in this case, I would say, let's chop it off right here. Oh, why is it not letting me draw? Please let me draw. So I'm saying, let's chop it off right here. Then remember we said, let's color it in so that we can keep track of which box is which. So here's the pink, ah, oh, oh, the pink box. Pink box, pink box. Here is the mm, green box. <laughs> green box. Okay, so now we have to come up with our two sets of um, dimensions. So I'm going to go to the black and I'm going to say this box is, is, well, let's do the bottom box first. Three times five times seven. Three times five is 15. 15 times seven, well, that would be like five times seven, which is 35, um, plus 10 times seven, which is 70. 70 and 35 equals 105 if I haven't made a mistake, which I could have done. 105, and the way we write this is we write these centimeters and we put a little tiny three above it. Okay, now we have to figure out the pink box. We know it's three times three, right? Which equals nine, but we have to come up with the third dimension. So if we have this one, right? which is three, and this one, which is three, we need to know this one right here. Does anybody know what that would be? Can you see it on the diagram anywhere? Mm. How long would that be? Mm. Hmm. Seven. Okay, Amadi says it's seven. He says it's the same as here. Do you guys agree? I would say no, Amadi. That's going to be the same as this dimension up here yeah. across, but it's going to be too long. Yeah. This one, this one right here is going to be the same as this one right here, which is going to be the same as this one right here. Right? Yeah. What is this one? It's five. Five. Yeah. So you got to be careful and then label it. And nine times five is? Nine times five, five is 45. Now we have one last step. What is it? We have to add the bottom one. So 45 plus 105 equals? 105. Anybody, anybody? 150 centimeters cubed. I can't label it because I don't have space. 150, let's see if we're right. Okay, there was, oh. Wait. No, there was another one, there, there was eight sketch, sketchbook answers. Oh, here we go, thank you. Okay, 150, oh, they just give you the answer, they don't show you how to do it here. Okay, did that make sense? So be careful, because what Amadi did is what a lot of us do, which is not pick the right number. So you've got to be really careful that you've gotten the right one. So again, here is the, here's the shape you're going to have to picture. I would really recommend using your notebook today because you're going to be able to draw on the um, objects and get it just right. So I would grab your math notebook if you have it handy and turn to this page, which is 10, uh, 904, sorry. Is that right? 1004? Are we in 10? Oh, I got to look. <laughs> Yeah, it's not 904, it's 1004, sorry, 1004. So I just got out my book and I'm gonna turn to this page because it's gonna be a lot easier to do this um, on paper than it is by just looking at it. This is really a visual thing. So you're gonna have to be very careful. Again, you're gonna have to split these up. See the red line down here where they pictured splitting it up and figure out the bottom one and then figure out the top one. 
You're going to have to be careful. I would recommend using um, paper and pencil. Oh, we were going to watch that video. Oh, it wasn't a video. That's right. Let's see if this one's a video. Where'd it go? Or are they just problems? Let's have a look. Oh, no, they're just more problems. So they're just taking you through these steps and letting you practice with their online tools how to divide it. So here you could divide it here, or if you wanted to, where's the eraser? You could divide it. Ah, sometimes you can't divide it both ways, um, but sometimes you can. Where is the eraser and why is it not erasing? There it goes. So you could also divide it here and make this tiny one. Oh, come on you, being very annoying. This tiny one, if you can figure out the dimensions, you could just take that little piece off and do the big piece and then the little piece, but you're gonna have to be very careful, okay? Do you guys wanna do one more together or do you think you have it? No response. I'm guessing that means you think you have it. What did I learn? I learned how to break it into two separate boxes to figure it out. What's my assignment? Volume combinations. You can do this on Cami if you want, but I really recommend you grab your paper and do it on paper today. I think it'll really help. Um, but you may do it on Cami if you like. Uh, if you would like to now go to breakout rooms, you can, or if you feel like you're gonna need more help, you can stay with me. I'm gonna set up breakout rooms and you can also work with a friend if you want to. So I'm going to stop the recording. You actually like do it like by yourself, by your own time. Or you can just do it by yourself at home. If you don't think you're going to have any questions, that's fine too. I'll let you choose your breakout rooms. Um, open all rooms. Today is a B day. Is that right? No. What is today? A or B? What did you guys just have? Math? Or did you just have art or did you just have Spanish? Art. We just had art. Okay. So Meister Janie will be coming in soon and she can also help if you're in a breakout room, okay? So you may go to a breakout room or you can stay with me and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go through the first problem. 